Hello, hello, my lovely, lovely audience. Welcome to another video. Welcome to the first uh, episode of my themed weeks. Apologies if this is coming out late. This is Monday's episode. So apologies if it's coming up on Tuesday. I will be posting another video on Tuesday. Now, in case you're wondering what a themed week is, it's where, essentially, I have my viewers vote for something like African mythology or Norse mythology. Having my viewers vote between things, and then I, you know, m post one video every day for a week straight, following that theme that my viewers voted for, They've chosen African mythology, so I'm here to deliver. If you have any creatures in African mythology that you want me to make a video about, or check, have me check out, leave them in the comment section. Anyway, with that, let's get on with the video. A green-haired boy would be bouncing in his seat. About to be told what his quirk is by the quirk doctor, the doctor would begin. Mrs. Inko, it appears like your son has an extraordinarily potent transformation type quirk. Inko would kind of smile because her son has a decent quirk. She would say, Oh, you mean like he can turn into people? And different things? The doctor would say, Yeah, different things. People also, yeah, I guess. But no, I don't think you're grasping what this kid can do. But, like, he can fucking turn himself inside out if he wanted to. Inko would look at the quirk doctor, confused. What do you mean my son can turn himself inside out if he wanted to? I mean like he has perfect control over his cells type beat. <clears throat> Little gremlin, like, if something doesn't immediately kill him, he'll probably just be able to recover within like a second. <laughs> It is absurd. Just the sheer... I don't even know how to describe it, like... Bullshit! That this quirk is... Like... Sheesh! It's a transformation type, but it can be like... like really, I, I don't know what to say. The sky is the limit. Both... Literally and theoretically. Oh, well, that's nice. Well, what about my daughter over here? I... Izuku's sister, yes, she, he has a sister in this what if, would... Say hi. Now, her quirk would be simple wind and fire manipulation. Now, time skip. Uh, playground. Azumi is showing off a quirk to everyone, just the ability to produce and manipulate fire and produce winds to help with said fire. And Izuku would want to show off his quirk. He would think about wanting to become a bat, so he would try. He would, technically, halfly, He would sprout wings out of his arms, and, well, this. After about a minute, he would turn into a full-on bat, like full proper bat, but he's already traumatized like everyone there. So, say it with me now, Deku would be picked on, and... Because I like making stories where the main character can't have happiness, <laughs> uh, 
can't have the slightest bit of joy. <laughs> Inko would be a ne neglectful bitch. So would Hisashi. To the point where they have three plates and like five chairs. Three plates, five chairs, and they ain't remembering shit about him. So one night, Adepu would grab his m mediocre amount of things. It, it, it's very mediocre. And, well, he would just fly out the window. <laughs> Giant fucking Batman form. Like, full-on man-bat. Ah, <sighs> he's going to miss his sister. That's it. That's it, really. Until, well, whilst he's flying, his quirk would suddenly shut off, and his wings would begin retracting into himself, and he would go plummeting down to the ground. A scraggly, hobo-looking man would come along and say, I did not realize you were a child. Deku would groan, look up, and say, Oh, you you're Shota Aizawa, right? The cat, the underground hero. Fuck, my ribs, my ribs, oh my fuck. Yeah, what is a child like you doing out? Ah, oh, my fucking ribs. <laughs> like he's, Deku's on his own world. Just, like, my ribs, they hurt. <laughs> Kid, hello, uh, just, you know, on a nightly flight, fuck my ribcage, I, I think something's broken. D do you need help? My ribs feel like they're penetrating through my heart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's just kind of, that guy's just kind of on the ground. In pain. <laughs> Izawa would notice how Deck is wearing long sleeves despite the whole giant bat thing. Like, really, it's probably uncomfortable to fly when you have bat wings and also long ass fucking sleeves on. He would check under the sleeves and notice, oh shit, he's covered in scars. <laughs> Give me a moment. Okay, I'm back. So then, Exawa would notice the, you know, scars on Deku's arms. He would be like, oh. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> uh, and so thus, he would take Deku in well, until they either A, find him his parents, or B, find him new ones. <laughs> Maybe a bit of, maybe there's gonna be a third option, who knows. So, he would take Deku in, give him a meal, give him some food. Also, because why the hell not, I ship these two way too much. Present Mike and like I said, how are married because, fuck it. The proposal is exactly how you think it was, it was just... Present Mike saying that they should get married <laughs> and that it would be a funny prank to die in each other's arms <laughs> lovingly. <laughs> Hi, Daddy, my little patchy baby cat. So, yeah, that's how that went. <laughs> Time skip about a day. Yes, Catty. Izumi is bored. She's, like, in her bed. She's in the lounge. Bored out of her mind. It's like a s Saturday. Then she would remember, I have an older brother. She would get up and quickly, like, run to her room as Inko seeing this would ask, 
Hey, uh, Zumi, where you going? Yeah. My cat's digging in its litter box now. That's that noise. I'll pause for you. My cat's just kind of staring at me on the litter box. It's very cute. So, let's continue. Yes, Zumi would remember. Oh, I have a brother. She would go upstairs, you know, on her way. Inka would stop her and ask where she's going. As she would say in a cute little, you know, girly baby face. Oh, I'm just gonna go see Oni-chan. Inko's like, Oni? Like, brother? Older brother? And then, like, Vietnam flashbacks would hit her about how she had a child. Like, full on. Give me a moment. Like, full on Vietnam flashbacks. Like, oh. She would look at, like, the table and see three plates. And she would say, oh. Oh no. So, Inko would quickly rush upstairs with Izumi, like, Oh my shit, how could I forget about my other child? Oh my fucking shit. I'm such a bad person. <laughs> like, that's the thought that's running through her head. They enter his room, and it's characteristically bland. Not that much there. Hell, there isn't even a bed. <laughs> they sold it. They... Like, yeah, that's how big, how, that's how much they forgot about him. They sold his bed. <laughs> because, like, no, they moved it to the guest room. <laughs> because, you know, in their eyes, his room was the guest room. So that's just, a, like, a blanket and a pillow on the floor. <laughs> and along with that, there are these paintings. Paintings of different things. Such as, well, one of them be this, the Pawabawa. Uh, others be like the lightning bird, and so on. Yes, this is a natural creature in our mythology. The lightning bird, yes, we basically have Zapdos in African mythology down here. I'm African, so, yeah. Yes, I'm a white African, sue me. I was born here, but I'm white. Yeah. That's just how things are. Anyway, let's continue. Inko, on like the verge of tears, realizing the only thing her child had was a few like incredibly worn down pencils to draw things, which he was very good at, may I mind you. Like this level of good. <laughs> and he used himself as a model for his, his paintings. It's just kind of sad. What makes it worse is that she finds a picture like on one of the very few tables in the room. Like the singular table. A picture of the family on a nice vacation. Vacation to, let's say, Hawaii. You want to know what makes the picture sad? Izuku's nowhere in the picture. They left him at home. <gasps> they went to fucking Hawaii without him. Uh, how I love torturing my characters. Not my characters. I don't own anything or anyone from My Hero Academia. I just like torturing people in stories. Don't own anything in MHA, aside from the stories themselves that I am making based around MHA. Yeah. She would call her husband and get him off hero duty. It goes a retired hero. You know, the kids and all that. Masashi ain't retired, like... Top 50 salamander. Yeah. She would call her husband like, We need to talk. Cut to Mizuku and Aizawa. Uh, 
like he just had the best night's sleep of his life. That morning, he'll, he would wake up, give a fang-toothed yawn, think like, you know, a demon from Demon Slayer, in terms of the fang size, think like Kokushibo. Hell, he, he can even have the extra eyes if you want. Just how he wakes up in the mornings. <laughs> uh, joke. Anyway, yeah. He'll get downstairs, blah, blah, blah. You know. So on and so forth. Cut back to Hazashi and Inko. Inko's like crying her eyes out on the floor. So is Zumi. Asashi has an absolutely no idea what's going on until he noticed, until, like, Inko says it aloud. Says that they forgot about Izuku and now he's run away. Asashi would have, like, Vietnam flashbacks as well. Just, oh. Oh, holy shit, oh fuck, oh shit. Anyway, yeah, Deku's wearing, like, just, you know, clothes. Not even, like, clothes for his age. Like, clothes that are for, like, seven years ahead of him type deal. Anyway, time skip a month. Sashi and... Well, just as Sashi has been looking for Zuku vigorously. This is like when they're five. He wants to find his son and make up to him. And or, if he's dead, give him a proper burial. <laughs> like, he feels absolutely shit. And Zumi's, like, hasn't stopped sobbing since, like, her brother's gone. So, time skip to the night. Izuku would go up to Frieza Head and present Mike, presentation Michael, as people call him, Aizawa and present Mike, and say, I would like to thank you for looking after me, but, uh, you know, at my previous life, I had a sister. Mind if I go visit her? President Mike would look at Aizawa. Aizawa would look at him. Aizawa's looking at him like, no. President Mike's looking at him like, yes. As Aizawa would say, Mike, no. Mike, yes. Mike, no. Mike, yes. Sure thing, little listener. Go on, go free. Go see your sister and come back by eight. Deku would give him a thumbs up before he would jump out the window and, like, soar off into the night. Aizawa would look at Mike like, you fuck. What? He wants to see a sister, let him see a sister. You know, we haven't been able to get the adoption papers through yet, because, you know, he's technically a missing child. If, you know, his parents find him, he'll be stuck there for who knows how long. Present Mike, you fuck. Just like before Aizawa detonates, we cut back to Deku, who's just casually gliding, as in the distance, like Deku's just casually gliding in the sky above everyone else. You know, just following the scent, that his old scent from a few days ago. And then he would just hear present Mike's loud voice going, Ah, no! <gasps> like glass would shatter. Man, 
Mike must have really pissed off Aizawa that much. Very much so. Like it's, ah, no, not the red eyes. <laughs> Didn't even know he could use his quirk whilst Aizawa was blocking it. Neat. <laughs> That's what Deku just silently says to himself. Deku would fly by Izumi's window and tap on it. Izumi would see Deku almost freak out, but Deku would just put his finger on his lips like, Shut up! Izumi would nod, open the window. As the two would give each other a hug, having missed each other. Izumi would say, Mom, Ma and Pop have been looking for you up. So glad you're back. Zuku would look at her and say, You think I'm staying? Nah, I, I came here to visit you. <laughs> but, like, at eight, I have to leave. Uh, um. Also, please, for the love of everything, do not tell them I was here. Otherwise, I'll have to stop coming. Uh, uh, okay. What, wait, you're coming again? Yes, I'm coming again. Of course I am. But if you tell them I was here, I can't come again, because then they'll, you know, catch me and most probably forget about me again. Oh. The two would spend some time together, bond a bit, then Deku's out. He dips. After about three months, Deku's presumed dead. Aizawa would then stroll in like... He ain't dead. I've been looking after him for the last three months. <laughs> Just like, enters the courtroom where they're deciding that, kicks down the door, and says, No, he isn't dead. He's right here. He would say that carrying Izuku. And I would like to place a request for adoption. He has been showing severe signs of malnutrition and scarring along his body due to the neglectful nature of his parents and the fact that he ran away into the unknown for like three months. Just shows how shat they were at their job. So I am placing a file for adoption. Like, it's a full-on Ace Attorney case. Shota, you know, Aizawa and President Mike win. Yada, yada, yada. Deku's now in the grasp of Aizawa. The niceness. Deku would want to become a hero, so Aizawa would begin training his body and physicality, blah, blah, blah. You know, there's quirk training and unquirk training. Quirk training is where they have him, like, fight against Aizawa and manipulate his body in such a way that he can fight against my Aizawa. <laughs> so, one day, Deku would go up to Mike, like, Mike, present Mike, uh, please call me Pops. Uh, okay, Pops, uh... I want to try and imitate Aizawa's quirk. Uh, I remember, like, the quirk doctor saying my quirk, you know, the sky's the limit, figuratively and literally, so, you know, might as well try. Sure thing! Deku would climb on top of President Mike and look into his eyes. President Mike would feel amused at how cute Izuku is trying to imitate his dad's quirk until Deku's eyes flash yellow, and suddenly present Mike can't move. Hey, uh, Shota! Yeah, Mike? It appears like our little listener can paralyze people. Oh, how did you find that out? Well, I can't move. <laughs> oh. Oh. Like, up, uh, like, five minutes later, they're just sat on the couch, present Mike still trapped in his seat. Aizawa would ask Deku, 
Do you have any idea how long this will last? No clue. Like present Mike's just sat there frozen. As he would say, I would not mind a popsicle. Bitch, you frozen. <laughs> as I would say, just picking up a pillow and chucking at it. It at him. You know, at present Mike, who finally broke eye contact with Deku, you know, his eyes were just compulsively looking at Deku's. Him finally breaking eye contact would gain the ability to move. Ah! Ha ha! I overcame you, paralysis! Hmm. Seems like, uh, it's based off eye contact. Neat. Anyway, so, yes. That has occurred. Since it's like almost three in the morning where I am, I'm ending this off here. Goodbye, my lovely, lovely audience. I hope you enjoyed. I hope to see you next time. And, uh, you know what? No, fuck it. I'm gonna continue. Gonna continue up until you wait. Massive time skip. Deku has been routinely, like, once every month on the full moon, going back to his old home where Izumi is. He would be informed wherever they're moving to, so on and so forth. If they did move. So, you know, massive time skip. Izuku and, like, Izumi... Standing out the gate, like standing outside of UA entrance exam, Zumi would be f like freaking out. Deku's just kind of like casual about it, just too tired to think. He's been living and training with Aizawa for the majority of his life. He 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 does not get it. He does not get sleep. Sleep gets him. <laughs> uh, joke. You know, Zumi would quickly jump onto, like, Deku, grabbing him, nuzzling his cheek, like, Oh my goodness, I can't believe it. It's you, I, uh, let's do good on, let's do our best on the entrance exam. If you don't get in, I will, I will whip your butt, but if you do get in, I'm gonna get us both like cookies at the nearest cat cafe. How does that sound? I think it sounds great. Uh, wait, what was I talking about? Daku would chuckle, bonking Izumi on the head, saying, <laughs> oh, You're such an airhead. Uh, I'm not an airhead, I just have difficulties remembering things. Like he would playfully bonk her on the head. They would enter, Daku would trip. You know, present Mike's explaining, Deku's muttering to himself about every possibility and robot. Present Mike's like, that's my kid. Eyes <laughs> out, like, Ida, like, fucking pre-programmed bot he is, <laughs> would go through the motions of complaining to present Mike, and then would complain to Deku. Deku would just kind of keep on muttering to himself, not paying attention, just like in one of those states of being like half asleep, half awake, and your brains are occupied with something else. Izumi would knock Deku on the back of the head as she would say, Oni-chan, you're being talked to. Uh-oh, who? She would just point Ida. He's being rude. Uh, I am not being rude. He is distracting everyone else in this hall. He would yell that last part. Stecky would look at him and say, First of all, you're the one distracting everyone. Second of all, uh, if I was some random student who was nervous, you could have single-handedly prevented me from getting into UA when I would have otherwise because you would have knocked me out of my mojo 
mind your own damn business. Like, odds are you're probably gonna get someone in this hall who should be in UA, not in UA, if you continue with your bullshit. Ida would think to make a reply for a second. Present Mike's just like, I mean, he has a point. <laughs> Ida would just sit down, dejected. But, yeah. So, Taiko doesn't meet up with Yuharika, blah blah blah. You know, he doesn't encounter the sludge villain because he lives with Aizawa, different route. Blah blah blah. They were to go to the, you know, testing area. He'll do pretty well on the written exam. So would Izumi. Physical exam would be where they shine, though. As soon as the gates open, he is blitzing it. Out of there. Matched head to head with mm, a pink haired girl who seems to be emitting a pink lightning. The girl also has pink skin. What it what a themed individual. <laughs> like, what do I mean by deck is blitzing? I mean like he's fucking flying. I said I was like, they're cheating! As as present Mike would say, No they're not! That's what a hero should do. Just Jump into danger head first. Civilians won't... The villains won't give you a countdown, and sure as hell the civilians won't. Go, you retards! Oh my fuck, I've been spending too much time with Aizawa. <laughs> like, you would just say that last bit. Like, slightly dejected. Everyone can still hear him. <laughs> like... Uh, go! Go, go, go! Everyone would start running. Deku would de-transform from his bad form. His hand would coil up like some kind of drill as he would begin, like, arms. Ever play that game? Like, the game with the boxing gloves that are spring-loaded and every character has them arms. He's fucking boxing through robots like that. Like he has a hardened drill tentacle things just slamming into robots. Now, Popo Bowers, in myth, you know, in their myths and urban legends, the capacity of their transformation and shape shifting capabilities is unknown. We don't know if they can only turn into the bat. Well, we know they can definitely turn into more than the bat-human hybrid. So, we just don't know what's the limit. So, I'm just saying there is none. It's like fucking magic. Also, I'm sure you're wondering, how does Deku have scars if he, like, he can heal himself? He just didn't really fix himself. And also, how did Aizawa's quirk work on him if his, he was using his quirk? Deku had layered the bat wings over himself and the fur. He had la layered the bat over himself. He didn't turn himself into the bat. He layered it over himself. Because he finds it uncomfortable, <laughs> like transforming into the bat. The process can be painful, so just layering it on enough sometimes is good enough. But, like, he, it's a true transformation at this point, not just, like, layering it on, like, clothing. So, the arms reference that he's essentially making is a true transformation, as in he's transforming his actual arms and limbs into the thing. This makes sense? Okay, good. He's just busting through robots. Uh, it's Everyone's like, the fuck is this kid's quirk? <laughs> like, he's bashing through robots, pulling people away from robots who were about to be hit by robots. Like, he is now a mass of just 
fucking tentacles. And then he would impale multiple robots with, like, hardened tentacles. No one knows the fuck this kid's quirk is. Like, damn. Didn't know shape-shifting could be that powerful. <laughs> uh. So, yeah. Zero Pointer comes out. He just is like, Oh, fuck nah. Until they would hear, uh, I need some help, please. Oh, fuck. Ah. Deku and the pink-haired, pink-skinned girl would look and see a red spiky-haired individual under a piece of rubble. Deku would begin to instinctively, like, fly towards him to try and get him out of there. The pink-haired girl would also go in, like, a full sprint. The two are now, like, side by side. They would just share a glance and instinctively know what the other's gonna do. Deku would dive bomb um, under pieces of rubble, like, just majestically moving through them, <laughs> like, as well his feet, which are kind of talons at this point, would pick up the rubble on top of him and pick up the red hair individual as, you know, they fly away. And whilst that's happening, in order to prevent them from getting crushed by the Zero Pointer and or buildings, the pink-haired girl would jump up and shatter the... like, punch the absolute fucking shit out of the Zero Pointer. Like, it goes fucking flying. Deku would just kind of look at this like, holy fuck. By the way, Deku still paints. Yeah. Also, tell me if you know what this creature is. I know what it is. If you know what it is, your comment gets pinned. It's a creature with the head of an elephant, the body of a snake, and it has snake legs. It has elephant legs at the back and front of it. What is it? Once again, I know what it is. Do you. Your comment gets pinned if you know what it is. Back to the what if. Like he was looking at the pink-haired, pink-skinned girl, like, Holy fuck! How the hell? Yeah, I was thinking my quirk was good. Shit! Damn, super strength is getting out of hand. He would just say this to himself as he, like, flies into a wall with the red-haired individual. Like, he's too preoccupied with the light show that is the zero point of getting flung. <laughs> so Deku would just kind of like fly around, get her, um, look at her like, the hell was that? And then fly into the side of a building. <laughs> just like fly into the concrete wall. All three of them, like, are cartoonishly stuck to it. And then they would peel off and fall to the ground in a pile. Mina, the, we all know who she is. She's the pink-haired girl, Mina. Would just say, uh, well, that was almost cool. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty cool to anyone who didn't see the ending, I guess. Agreed. Ah, uh, this remem this reminds me of the time I was adopted by my father. Give me a moment. 